thank you so much, Don, for taking time to be with me today. I really appreciate your time and I love talking with you. So I just have a couple of questions that I'd like to ask. The first one is, what in your youth caused you to become an activist? What beliefs or events or things that happened to you when you were young? Um, I was raised by um, my grandmother. So it was she and I um, that were raised together. And she was always conceptually treat people how you want to be treated. That was drilled um, into me as a child. And in school, I oftentimes tell the story that I was like scruffled. Uh, I always was in somebody's business, not knowing what activism was. It was, hey, don't treat that person that way or you can't say that to that person. That person has feelings. Why are you treating this person this way? And I was a weird little bird. I always wanted to know what made people tick or what made people work? What made people think the thoughts that they thought? What made people devise the situations or what made them treat other people different. And we're all different color, same blood, same uh, body makeup or mechanism, maybe different structure. But I just wanted a life that everything was kind of harmonic. You know, you, you treat people how you want to be treated. So that was the basis for activism for me um, to treat people in their line of how I wanted to be treated. What continues to motivate you, to guide you, to give you courage as you go forward? Being told no. Being told that I cannot do this or it's not going to work for me and nothing's going to happen. Um, you're wasting your time. So the negatives have become pros for me. Um, and the cons have become pros for me to push forward, to know that at some point I live in this fantasy world that life is going to shift and things are going to change and you're going to make a difference at some point. It's time consuming. There's prices to be paid. There's walks to be walked. This has been a lonely walk, but being told no, and it's not going to happen. And every time that I'm told no, and it's not going to happen and nothing's going to work and nobody's listening, something breaks. And that's been the driving force for me. Can, can you give me an example of a time when you were told no, that you just took that as a, I'm not going to listen to that. I'm going to go forward. That was even in the situation that I was in with the um, issues on, a, on the job that I was in that brought me to activism was, hey, I'm telling you, this is going on. This is happening here. What are we going to do about it? Why is anybody not doing anything about it? And I remember being told, you must not want your job. Um, do you want to remain employed? You're not going to be an employee here if you keep pushing the issue. So I don't have a button that tells me to shut off. It's a driving mechanism. And I'm so curious, you know, and you oftentimes hear people say curiosity killed the cat. <laughs> um, so I'm curious in that mechanism to want to know, OK, let me find out what's going on. Let me find out why this is not working. Let me find out why no one's telling me anything. Um, and I just don't know how to stop. I was always the rebel um, in the home. I did the opposite of what I was told. So opposition pushes me forward. And then the love and the care for individuals, welfare, health, and mental being is a drive as well. I know that you've been a positive influence on many women's lives. Do you have one story that maybe comes to mind for you? Um, working in the prison system. I had a 23-year-old young lady that entered. I was a sick call nurse at the time and she entered my office and she was in tears. And she and I had a conversation there to where she said her husband was going to leave her because she could not bear any more children. And she just did not want life outside of her husband. And she and I talked a few minutes and I encouraged her. And of course, prayer takes a precedence in my life. So prayed with her and encouraged and motivated her and talked with her to find out that she was one of the women that had been subjected to uh, the gynecological procedures that were involuntarily by the women going on inside the facility. And it was very heart wrenching. And she and I cried together and I began to build alliances with them. Um, to where they could come into the office and it became a safe haven. So now I'm not just a sick call nurse. 
but I'm, I'm a motivational list and I'm an encourager and you can come in and we can have downtime. You can come in and relax, <laughs> relate and release. So I became that place for them to relax, to be relatable to and to release. What a, what a gift you were in a very untenable situation. What advice do you have for young people, for youth activists today? I am 45. I'm a single mom of five. Age plays not a part when it comes to being involved in someone's life or livelihood, making a difference um, in somebody else's life. I ran across a quote that um, Mahatma Gandhi said, be what you want to see in the world. You be the change that you want to see in the world. So I'm telling the youth uh, activists, you be the change that you want to see in the world. Um, And don't allow anybody to tell you that you're too young. Um, or in my case, too old, or um, you're not mature enough, or you don't know what you're talking about, or you're causing trouble and you're wreaking havoc. Whenever those things begin to hit your life, then that lets you know that you're stepping on toes and there's change being made. So press past the negativity, use the negativity as a driving force. Um, I use it and I acronym myself as a train. The negativity is the coal that fuels the fire that pushes me forward. So press forward past what um, any negative words or any negative uh, connotations that people have for you. Do the opposite. What gives you the courage to keep going when you get negative after negative after negative? As a child, my grandma would tell me all the time, girl, keep your mouth closed. Um, <laughs> leave that alone. <laughs> that, that doesn't concern you. But I was a watch child. So being the watch child, um, I work reversed. And what fuels that is there's a little bit of curiosity on the inside of me that wants to know why. Um, my son is 24. My oldest child is 24 years old. He's the watch child. Um, and, and he wants to know why. So to ask those questions, why sometimes runs us to what we seem to be a dead end, but is really a opening that's there. And it's really a tunnel that we just have to tunnel through. So if we can realize and come within ourselves, because it hasn't been easy. Um, at one point, the negativity caused me to be depressed. But outside of depression, there's life. And when you begin to think about all the people that you're helping and think about all the people that you're pulling in, then I begin to reiterate that energy to the positive. So I don't focus on the negatives now. It took me a while, but I take in the positives, the award ceremonies and the emails that I've gotten, the cards that I've gotten, that there's really more people for you than there are against you. Thank you so much, Don. It's been wonderful talking with you and I wish you all the best going forward. Thanks very much. 